here's the problem. Okay, the problem is, is we live on a planet that's far more dynamic than anybody had realized until just within the last decade or two or three, right? So given that, we now know that Okay, and, and we're open to the idea that every so often these, these world-changing events happen. Up until this point, they're out of our control. Knowing this, do we, is there a, is there a, a rational response to, to this information? Do we apply this information to our own civilization so that what we do is we enhance the probabilities of our own civilization becoming successful in the long term. Hmm. And I think that would have to be a major part of, of what we're talking about here. Um, yes, because this information exists. But I think the point is, it's not just of academic interest. Of course, it is of academic interest. But I think it has practical ramifications, far-reaching practical ramifications. And part of that would be, part of, I think, what we would be doing here is exploring what those ramifications would be. And are there courses of action that would um, enhance the probabilities of us being successful over the long term, living on planet Earth. Um, and I think because I'm generally an optimist, I don't go along with all of those who are basically thinking it's, you know, it's futile. Um, we're destroying the planet. Um, you know, because the, listen, let me say this. The planet has endured far, far worse than anything we have yet imposed upon it. That's not to say that we shouldn't, uh, you know, keep our house in order. Absolutely, we should. It's not to say that we shouldn't try to live in balance and harmony with the natural order as we understand it, because we absolutely should. But the point is, is once we begin to look into the, the dynamic history of planet Earth, we begin to see that, yeah, this planet has endured over and over and over again, things, phenomena, forces far beyond anything we have yet imposed on it. Right. And in the political discussions today, this it's just that, that insight into the nature of planetary history and our relation to, relationship to it tends to be downplayed, if not ignored altogether. Because the scenario that's now being manufactured for public consumption is Essentially, our activity is destroying the planet. We're causing a sixth grade mass extinction. And if we don't make drastic changes to, to every aspect of our life, we're going to destroy the planet. Yeah. But we have to be really careful because if it turns out that there are things we're so focused on our own consequences that we're ignoring the bigger picture, we could get caught um, with our trousers down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to live where you're susceptible to forest, if you're going to live in the woods and you're susceptible to forest fires, put a standing sea metal roof on your house. Okay, that's just common sense, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, the analogy I use is uh, no matter where you live, there's going to be some kind of natural disaster that it's only prudent that you are prepared to deal with. If you're living in the coast of South Carolina, it's good that you have some kind of plan in place for hurricanes. You know, if you're living in in Kansas or, or Nebraska, you know, it's probably a good idea to have a plan in place, you know, for tornadoes, you know, you've got natural disasters, you know, you've got tsunamis, you've got volcanic eruptions, you've got things that if people adapt to them and, and know how to respond, they will survive, otherwise they, they don't. And, you know, here we'll talk about examples from recent history, like a, a, a really powerful example would be um, the eruption of Tambora back in uh, 1815 and what that did um, to the island and the culture. There was a whole culture that was essentially erased from existence within, a, within one hour with the, a language that was lost, a whole heritage of mythology. There was a whole culture that existed on that island when Tambora erupted and within one hour it was gone, completely erased, right? So there are these analogs that, that have happened in recent history that we need to look at. And we will look at those. Um, modern disasters, because, see, there's a scale of disasters. Uh, and, and each of these scales is separated by a threshold. So you might have a disaster that could be really devastating locally. Think of, think of Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, and what it did to New Orleans. New Orleans is still not fully recovered from Katrina yet, right? And there are reasons for that. Um, but the point is, is that what happened at Katrina didn't really affect it it had economic ripples of course but it didn't really directly affect somebody living up in chicago 
or, or somebody living in New York. It didn't really affect us here in Atlanta. So a lot of the people actually in the, in the aftermath of Katrina emigrated up here to Atlanta. I met quite a few people that, yeah, we were living in New Orleans and then we suddenly found ourselves without a home. Now we're living here in Atlanta. So Atlanta became kind of a place of refuge for people who were displaced during the Korean, the Katrina disaster. Right. So, but let's look at that and think about what would have happened. Now, see, we're, the recovery was able to happen, and the re, still the ongoing recovery is because the majority of the infrastructure surrounding it still is intact. It's still functioning, right? But what if you had an event that was, let's say, one order of magnitude greater than Katrina? Let's say an event whose 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 environmental effects and so on were so extreme that you you had the equivalent of ten. New Orleans wiped out like that, right? We could recover from that, but it would be a, a really big challenge. And it would require diverting lots of resources from, from all over to, to rebuild it. Now think about two orders of magnitude. See, now we're at a threshold. If we're talking about an event that's 100 times more destructive than Katrina, we're now looking at an event that, that would really have major, major consequences that it might take literally decades to recover from. And I'm not, I'm talking about, you know, we're talking about a scale that could be encompassing an entire continent, right? But the history of Earth shows us that there have been times where there have been forces unleashed that would have been a thousand or 10,000 times more destructive than Katrina. And some of those events our ancestors lived through, you see. So it is really critically important that we learn those lessons. And when we look at Modern disasters, see, this is the scale invariant phenomenon that's so important. See, we can learn a whole lot about global disasters by even by looking at a local disaster. See, so, so when things happen, and, and as we sit here and speak now, we're seeing we're going into a, seems to be into a very active volcanic phase and possibly seismic phase. So this could be something that would be ongoing now. And if the sun continues to, to remain inactive, as it has been for the last three to four years, there may be consequences. And so one of the things we will be doing is we'll be exploring those consequences. And we'll be, and we'll be laying out um, potential um, strategies. Because out of this information, we have to develop strategies.